If you've ever tried to draw for any more than two seconds, you may have noticed, it's freaking hard. There are a ton of barriers that get in our way when we try to learn complex skill sets like we use in art, and some of these barriers you might not even be aware of. But don't fret, it happens to all of us. In this video, I'm going to shed light on the reasons why you're struggling to actually sit down and draw, and how to break through those barriers to become the artist you know you can be. Okay guys, this is a page from my indie comic book, Star Circuit. As I talk, we're gonna watch the page develop and you can see real time almost how I struggled with a lot of the female forms and just making the page come together. Jumping right into it, these are the reasons why you're struggling to sit down and draw. Aside from the meme-like names, I think it's probably impossible to completely avoid these. The first one is really for beginner artists and that's why I put it up first. Too much sauce. Yes, there's entirely too much sauce. In this case, the sauce being teachers of art. You're interested in art, you like comics or whatever, and you go to the internet, as one does, and immediately you're bombarded with an insane amount of online art gurus telling you they know the way and they have the experience, and all you gotta do is pay their annual subscription, Patreon, or buy their Super Bundle series, and you'll have everything you need. It's super overwhelming, it's exhausting, there's no filter for it, there's no way to discern the right way to go, and if you're a beginning artist, this is really tough. There's this quote, a man with one watch knows what time it is. A man with two watches is never sure. This is a modern problem. In the old days, you'd just go talk to the neighborhood art guy or whatever, and he'd be like, shut up and watch me work. And then you'd do it and you'd be like, easy, cool. These days, you have to put in a little bit of extra effort to find your person. So let your taste guide you, follow your eyes. Whatever artist you really admire, that's where you should be heading to. If they do the exact kind of work you want to do in the future, that's a bonus, really. Now all you have to do is pick the artist that you like the most, and then it's up to you to find where they teach. Lastly, here's a list of online art schools that I think are great, and they all have their own specific genre of art that they focus on. Don't worry, I have all the links in the description for easy use. Next is the ego paradox. It's one that can be pretty elusive and it is one that has ensnared me more than a few times. As you learn and grow with the fundamentals of art, you may begin to take shortcuts, say like with underdrawings or thinking you don't want to redo an exercise because it's a waste of time. This is almost always your ego interfering with the process of deeper learning. Here's why. The problem is, as Epictetus says, you cannot learn what you think you already know. Our subconscious ego or sense of self wants us to be as stable as possible. So it's constantly telling you, you're okay, you're doing fine, you have everything you need. The problem there is pretty obvious. You don't. Your mind is maybe closed to new information to protect your ego, but at the cost of your own growth. The simple solution is to let your work and your trusted peers' critiques guide you. If you think you studied enough hands, but you have reservations about how your hands actually look in your work, and maybe you even have a mentor that calls out the issues with them, that's a red flag. You should count that as a signal to keep on studying. Another great way to tell if you really know something or not is to do it under pressure, or better yet, teach the knowledge to someone else. Next is one of the biggest and the most obvious barriers to making art which is that art is a very hard game to play. It can be overwhelming, and it may even lead you to quit entirely. The first thing to notice is that I'm classifying the art journey as a game. From a certain perspective, everything's a game. Life's a game. And it's made up of all these other smaller games. Not all games are made the same either. Some are easier than others. In my experience, there are really three categories, but I'm just gonna focus on this last one. Games that are easy to start, get hard quickly, and then become easier at high levels. Examples are the visual arts, stand-up comedy, singing, and music. This is somewhat subjective, so I could be wrong, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Many games are hard in the beginning because of the prerequisite knowledge or skill it takes to begin. But easy games, on the other hand, have an immediate gratification and minimal barriers to entry, like with art. After a long time of studying and practice, you may start to feel comfortable with the tools and concepts, but it's a long road to get there. And here lies the problem as you get higher and higher up the slope of difficulty. The art journey doesn't have built-in feedback loops, guardrails to failure, and definitive paths to improvement. It's very easy to quit when you struggle for so long without perceived progress. 
But here's the solution. You have to create your own system. Essentially, you have to gamify this journey with those positive feedback loops, safety rails, and wind conditions. So let's create some of the things you need. The first thing you need is measurements. You need measurements so you can gauge your improvement over time. We like to see improvement no matter how small, but the key is to set measurements that are tied to the study and the work and not to the results. Examples of measurements can be time at the drawing desk, pages drawn on a project, carrying sketchbooks around with you every day, things like that. Now you need some wind conditions. Wind conditions are the milestones of each of these measurements. For example, if you are measuring the time at the drawing desk, whenever you hit consistently drawing every day of the week or a certain number of hours drawing, you've won. You can even keep a low key log of it. If you make your measurements and your wind conditions into a project all its own, like creating a comic book or something like that, you're going to be more motivated because in the end, you'll also have a final piece of work. Lastly, what are wind conditions without any rewards? This one's tricky because you don't want to reward too much so that you start to only work for the reward. But in general, acknowledging the wins that are actually there with physical rewards, it'll trigger a positive feedback loop. Setting up your game like this will ensure that you don't quit on this hard but rewarding game of the art journey. Let's get back to the more literal barriers in doing your art, which one of them is lack of time. Kids, pets, day jobs, responsibilities, obligations, and living a fun life with your friends and family can all be reasons why it doesn't seem like you have enough time for making art. The reasons you have are real. There's no doubt there. You do actually need to use your time to make money, manage your life, and spend time with your loved ones. So where do you find the extra time if you don't have any to spare? If you're not aware, let me introduce Parkinson's Law. It states that work expands to fill the time allotted for it. No matter the size of the task, it will often take precisely the amount of time you set aside for it. Essentially, as far as our minds are concerned, time is a vessel in which you put the tasks in, and not the other way around where the task time is set in stone. With obligations and tasks that you must do, I suggest to use this law to your advantage. If you must do chores around the house, don't plan for it to take three hours because, as the law states, it will. Instead, allot yourself one hour. You'll find you'll get pretty close to doing it in one hour. Now, you're left with a couple extra hours for art and to complete other obligations. Moving on, what stops most of us from picking up our tools and drawing? It's usually based in fear. Fear is a huge motivator of behavior. This base emotion will keep you away from dangerous situations, but it'll also keep you from sitting down and actually drawing. The biggest fear, besides death, in this modern age is fear of failure. To be more specific, it's not failing that is the foundation of the fear, but the judgments of others when you do. I find that it's specifically a judgment from one or two main people in your life. It could be a parent, friend, bully, rival, a social media interaction, so what can you do? We need failure to become not a measurement of incompetence or negativity, but of growth and motivation. A drawing that misses the mark or is poorly executed is not a reflection of who you really are, but of the journey you have yet to take. This path is yours and its signposts are marked by the shortcomings in your own work. Flip the narrative on failure and you'll start seeing the road ahead as an optimistic one, one where all the failures that you find are just markings of the journey not being over. Now, I know there's probably way more reasons that people have for not sitting down and actually getting to work and starting to draw, but I wanted to put all my reasons in one video and that way when times get tough, you can come back and use this resource, listen to it again. This art journey is one that's gonna force you to grow, so there's gonna be some pains there. Again, this art is from my comic book miniseries, Star Circuit. You can read a free preview, purchase chapter one, and much more on starcircuitcomic.com. It's in the description. If you like my videos and wanna support, like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. I love talking art and comics in the comments, so let me know your thoughts on these struggles that I've talked about in this video. And until next time, be good, everybody.